here at Gator Backhouse. So they're all going to shape up. Photo number two, the gate is down. We're into turn number one. And who's grabbing the early lead here this time? It looks like Natalia and Bird side by side out of the gate one more time. And it's Joe Bird grabbing his second consecutive hole shot here at Gatorback. And that looks like Natalia back in the number two spot as we make our way across the top of the Gators back. And look who's back in the number three spot for a second consecutive moto start. It's the number four of Tim Farr. But up front, it's Bird and the tally picking up where they left off before Joe Bird broke the shock in moto number one. Looks like Matt White, strong start back in the number four position aboard the number 32 Yamaha as he is uh, off to a blazing fast start here in moto number two. This is going to better him, obviously, if he can hold on to it in the overall if he can uh, run consistent here in moto number two. But there's Bird, there's the tally, there is Farr, there is Matt White. Behind him, Digger Doug Gus followed up by Jeremiah Jones. So Doug Gus back in the number five spot. Started out where he started out in moto number one. Had to work his way up into a second place position finish for that first moto. See if he can get it done here. Two motos in a row. Right now, though, it is Joe Bird. Looks like Bird may be beginning to stretch things out just a little bit. It is still the tally back in second. Still far in third. No changes as White, Gus, and Jones run four, five, and six here on the opening lap of this Gatorback second moto. Joe Bird still out front and still leading the freight train, if you will, of all of our pro riders as we head around for lap number one complete. Bird, Natali Farr, Matt White, Doug Dustin again just outside the top five in that sixth place position is the number two of Jeremiah Jones. Big air by Joe Bird as he flies high past the finish line through that whoop section. Closing in on him though, the number 13 of John Natali. It looks like Natali is trying to mount some sort of a challenge early on here in this second moto. Natalie realizing he does not have to beat Joe Bird to take the overall win here today. But as much as anything, these riders do not like to come in in a second place position. They will not even begin to start thinking about anything like that until the end of the moto and the closing laps before they start assessing that type of situation. Right now, John Natalie knows that he wants to get out front. And now he's trying as he goes underneath Joe Bird on the Gators tail. He will make the pass. And John Natalie moves into the lead. Joe Bird drops off the second place. As we were saying, he needs to put as much distance between himself and the rest of the pack back there if he wants to keep from tightening up before this race is all said and done. Here comes Bird challenging right back on board the number seven. He's not let John Natale get by that easily. Back in the number three spot, still Tim Farr holding on aboard the number four. Top of the hill now. It is Natalie and Bird wheel to wheel. Bird is right there ready to strike right back. He may be able to force Natalie into some sort of mistake. Matt White drops off to a sixth place position. Now as Doug Gus moves up the court. Jeremiah Jones rounds out the top five. But the battle is out front for the lead. That's where everybody's watching. Here comes Bird right back on Natalie. He bumps in there. Natalie and Bird side by side into the turn. Who's going to come out on top? It looks like the inside line advantage works best for John Natalie. That's time around and Joe Bird falls back and fades back a little further in the number two spot but don't count him out he's going to be striking right back trying to challenge John Natale he wants to make a statement out here because he knows that moto number one he ended up finishing things well before he was ready to do that you know that's a frustration that Joe Bird probably cannot stand to swallow at this point so he has got to try to retaliate here on this second moto if nothing else personal redemption far still back in third Gust the fourth good spot still Jeremiah Jones as the two Yoshimura Suzuki riders are going at it Jones trying to go around Digger Doug Gus but Gus not letting it happen this is number around. seven of Joe Bird still cannot get around as we head back down into the gator pit toward the end of this lap toward the hair pit turn now there goes the tally here comes Joe Bird Joe Bird is not done yet and again as we are getting later and later in the moto is John Natale beginning to slow down is that why we're starting to see the gap between second and third tighten up the way that it is and allowing both Digger Doug Gus and Jeremiah Jones to move up into that mix for the battle for the number one position we are on lap number seven now as you can see the the uh, hand signs the lead is not very big for John Natale as the gap is closing up. There is Tim Farr still in the number five ride out there for the number four. 
Again, good to see Barr out here and running so strong, especially on a rough racetrack, what we're looking at here. Look how rough this second moto is for those riders. Regardless of whether you're coming off back surgery or not, that has got to take a toll on a man's body out there on the race course. You better have had hope that your suspension is working at its peak performance on a race day like today. There goes Burt still trying to out-jump John the Tally on that uphill jump, jump section. Meanwhile, Digger Doug and Jeremiah are right there in the number three spot. So it looks like about as much of a gap between second and third as first and second. But now Bird wicking it up just a little bit, as is John the Tally. As he's feeling the pressure from Bird. Bird trying to go to the outside, sweep back down to the inside, side by side. He actually goes on the outside and makes the pass. Joe Bird moves into the number one spot now. And John the Tally drops off to second. The Tally could be in trouble here. Let's see if Gus can take advantage of it as he. He smells blood now, and he's going to try to strike into the hairpin turn. Look at that. Look how tight this battle is for first place late in the moto. Moto number two, and here comes the tally. Striking right back. He's not going to be able to make the pass, but look at the air that the 55 of Doug Gust is getting over that finish line jump. That could come into play later in this race as he and the tally are battling it out for the number two spot now. And look at this. It does come into play this time around. The momentum carries him into the number two spot. And now our Parts Unlimited leaderboard gets a little bit of a mix-up here as Joe Bird in the lead, Doug Gust in second, the tally in third place position with Jeremiah Jones back in the number four spot. And wow, what a leaderboard as we are now past the halfway point in the home stretch of this race. Dustin Wimmer back in the number 11 spot aboard the number 191 after running so strong in the qualifiers in Saturday racing action here at Gatorback. Lap number eight, look at this. Now now it looks like the number seven of Joe Bird is feeling the pressure from Digger Doug Gus, number 55. Gus wants to get out front and take the win here. If he does take the win in moto number two, a 2-1 will score him an overall score of three and give him the win for the day. Meanwhile, look at this. Natalie back in third. Here comes Jeremiah Jones from fourth place. He is challenging now. And let's start looking at the map and start doing the calculations here to see how this all starts to break down. Now, if Digger Doug can get out front, obviously he's going to take the win. I don't think he even has to make the pass into the number one spot, but uh, Jeremiah Jones just mount made the pass for third as John Natale fades back to a fourth place position, and it looks like the fatigue factor has came into play one more time in this third race of the 2006 ITP Moose Racing Series. Doesn't look like much of a fatigue factor right now for the number seven of Joe Bird. This looks like a more hunger tactic by the number 55, but Digger Doug Gus is what's going to rocket him into the number one spot. He does it in the same place. He gets around Joe Bird, same place he got around John Natale. A little bit different, but the same area of the racetrack as he's able to set it up two different ways. So now it is Gus out front, Bird in second, Jeremiah Jones in third, and the fourth place position is the number 13 of John Natale. Bird trying to retaliate now as we check him out on the tip of the Gators tail. It's a three-way battle still with Jeremiah Jones back in the number three spot. So don't count this race over just yet. Gus may be out front, but as hungry and as aggressive as Bird has been here in the second moto and as good as Bird has been doing throughout the entire 2006 season, Bird might be able to come back. But Jeremiah Jones, the unknown factor here in the 06 season, and whenever it all began, a lot of folks expected Jeremiah Jones to be the champion and the man in the number one position of points at this juncture in the series. But that is not the case. Jeremiah Jones is not even in a top ten position as he has had basically two really bad races. He DNFing in motos in both particular races and it's keeping him out of the top 20. And uh, I know it's also playing havoc on his mind as the race wears on. But right now, I know that uh, Jeremiah Jones is thinking, get around the number seven of Joe Burke if nothing else, show these folks how well the Suzuki can run. It's a brand new machine. Three races out of the box now for Jeremiah Jones and both Digger Doug Gus. And it looks like Gus has not had any problems out of his whatsoever. The only problems that Gus has had this year is getting together with other riders in particular. Down in Texas, Dustin Wimmer, moto number two start. He had to start from back at nearly dead last. Look at this. Jeremiah Jones going on the number seven of Joe Burke now is he going to be able to get around i know joe bird is extremely hungry and he wants to read 
now back from that 15th place finish. Every point counts to Joe Bird right now because he holds on to a points lead. He knows he's not going to be on the podium today, so everything that he can do, he's digging down and trying to fight for everything that he can to keep from losing that points lead any more points than he has to in the overall championship points race. It's still early in the season, but you've got to have strategy in order to win a championship. And right now, Joe Bird's strategy is race as hard as you possibly can. Redemption time here in Moto2 at Gatorback. And we can see that Joe Bird obviously deserved to be a part of the top five, if not even a podium position finish in Moto number one. But the broken shock is what kept him out of it. He had the number one spot locked down with John the Tally on his rear wheel until the rear shock problems popped up. And when they did, he went from first place all the way back to 15th before the checkered flag finally ever flew. But uh, right now it is Digger Doug, a second place finish in moto number one and a first place finish here in moto number two. Could give him the win. Here comes Jones. Jones is going to try to make the pass over the finish line jump. Is he going to be able to get it done the same way that Gus did? Let's see. Jones, nope, does not have the line on Joe Bird that Doug Gus did only a few short laps ago. But Jones trying to get it out of the next turn. But Joe Bird knows what Jeremiah Jones' plan was. He saw him working him a couple of laps prior to this, so he knew what Jones was setting him up for. There's fourth place right, and that's Pally now by himself back in the number four position. He has absolutely no competition at this point. As this moto wears on, if he continues to fade back like that, we're going to see sixth place on up. Even uh, got riders like Tavis Kane and Travis Spader, Duncan Berger, Lou Berger, the boys trying to get around the number 13 of John Natale, which would be a huge boost of confidence for each and every one of those riders, especially as dominant as the tally was only a year ago to see that they've been able to rise to the occasion and challenge the defending champion would be a uh, good boost for each and every one of those folks' program. Up front, a three-way battle. Still Gus, Bird, and Jones as we are working our way home toward the checkers and the conclusion of the second moto of racing. And uh, it is going to be Gus, like we said, taking the win if he can hold on to it. Looks like maybe Jeremiah Jones will still can try to pressure uh, uh, the number seven of Joe Bird, but I don't think he's going to try to put any pressure on the number 55 of Doug Gus because he knows as well as anyone out there that Doug Gus deserves this win. It was a hard fought battle for him and he's come up short already one time this year at, down in Texas like we said with that uh, second moto Fupa. but uh, he has come back to redeem himself here at Gatorback and look like maybe ride to an overall win here today as John Natale who took the moto number one win is running back in a fourth place position at the checkers. Digger Doug Gus followed by the number seven of Joe Bird in third place, Jeremiah Jones, as he gets the best finish so far in this 2006 season. But all spoils go to our champion here today at Gatorback, Doug Gus. Oh, that was tough, man. The competition is just unbelievable. That was a hard one. I worked for that. Yeah, I think I came out fifth and just, uh, you know, picked some good lines and uh, boy, the Suzuki LTR 450 put me to the front, Yoshimir Dunlop tires. Couldn't have done it without them. My mechanics, Paul and Ryan, for everybody that's helped me out, the Fox Shocks, woo, made this bike work great for me. Doug Gus gets the overall with a 2-1. John Natale, a 1-4, is good enough for second overall. Joe Havisto with a 3-7 gets third place overall. Matt White rounds out fourth with 6-8, and, and Joe Bird a 15-2, good enough 